Hey, hello everyone, welcome back. So we are ready to continue our journey. We are just a few steps away from actually starting our notes and hopefully start producing blogs in a couple of days. Uh, but before we do that, let me just remind you about the runtime system options for Haskell. Um, the runtime system uh, basically provides uh, the following services, memory management, garbage collection, concurrency and parallelism, and exception handling. So basically when we are running the node, we want to use a good set of runtime system options or flags to help our Cardano node to perform in the best possible way for us. I'm giving you a link here to the official documentation of the RTS options, uh, the runtime system. And actually, when we build Cardano node, I mean, the IOG relay, the IOG binaries uh, are already using a set of RTS options. Even you, if you build the node yourself, but you are using the default cabal file that is already included in the Cardano node repository, well, you will be building the node with this particular set of RTS options. T, I0, A16M, and to disable delay OS memory return. We will see in a minute what this means, but you can actually check that with this command, you can use Cardano node plus RTS dash dash info, and that will tell you which options uh, this node has uh, actually activated uh, or as default and which, which version was used to compile it and which options you are using by default. So when you use Cardano node run, something like a node run, something like that, the node will automatically run with this, with these options enabled, okay? But you can actually uh, tweak, extend or override the default options in Cardano node. You have two ways. One way is to actually edit the Cabal file itself and then build the node again with your own choice. That would be like using this Cabal file over here, Cardano node, Cardano node Cabal. And at the bottom of it, you will see uh, that we have where it is here, line 229, 219 and 20, 222. So we have for ARC and for all other architectures with RTS options, minus T, I0, A16M, and to disable OS memory return. So this is exactly what it is telling us here, right? Now, you could edit that and build it. Another way, perhaps an easier way, is to actually use the command line when you are running the command to actually modify, extend, or override the RTS options. And to know which options you have actually available, you can have, uh, you can use Cardano node plus RTS and dash question mark. And this will give you all the, let me just make it a little bit smaller. You can have all the options here that you can use to run Cardano node with a short description and that together with the link to the official documentation, certainly it will uh, give you a very good idea of what each of these options is for. So how to use these options is very, very simple. You have this command for running the node, correct? Cardano node run, path to the topology, path to the database, path to the socket path, the port, and the path to the configuration file. Well, then you can simply add plus RTS and pass the options that you want to use. Let's say uh, QG, we'll see in a minute what it is for. And let's say uh, QB. This will uh, tell 
that you are passing, we'll tell Cardano know that you are passing RTS options and will use them. You can optionally use minus RTS to close it, but it is not mandatory. If you close it here, you can you could still pass some arguments to the Cardano node run command if if needed. So now let me just do it this way and I can run it. And this will, of course, run Cardano node here. So let me just wait for it to open. Otherwise, I will risk creating a problem in the database. Now it is running. I can securely stop it. So clear. Now, so this is how you extend the default options uh, coming by default on the Cardano node. So this will not replace the options that we have available, but it will extend it. Of course, if you use any of the options on the default configuration here, like for example, we have I0, if you put it here, um, I3, I.03, for example, uh, it will override. But if you don't use the same options, you can just extend whatever it is running by default. And by default, we are using da uh, dash T. Well, let me just skip the dash so that it is easier to read. T, which produces the runtime system statics, uh, statistics, sorry, uh, such as the amount of time spent executing the program in the garbage collector, the amount of memory allocated, the maximum size of the heap, and so on. The three variants give different levels of detail. So basically that means that we have other options apart from only T, but we have other variants of this T option, which is dash T, dash S. So we have alternative options that will give us different results. And the main thing here with capital T option is that it produces no output. So if you want to actually check the statistics, the statistics that it's producing, you will need to use GHC stats. Um, and two, it is used to specify the number of threads to use for parallel execution. So this N2 flag specifies that the Haskell runtime system should use two parallel threads. The default is one. So we are doubling the number of threads to use. A16M, we are setting the maximum heap size for the generational garbage collector to 16 megabytes. The default, I think, is four, uh, four megabytes. So we are using four times more, uh, more size for the garbage collector. We also have um, this I0, this is A0, set the amount of idle time which must pass before a idle garbage collection is performed. But setting to zero disables the idle garbage collection. So you could have I2, I1, I3, I think the default is one, but we are setting it to zero, so we are disabling the idle garbage collection. And finally, we are using by default the disable delay OS memory return, and this is for accurate resident memory usage for programs shown in, like, in reporting tools like uh, TOP or HTOP. Uh, this is because if we don't use this, this, this option, uh, the reported art uh, RLS uh, resident memory uh, will be different and will will basically uh, make you think that it is using way more memory than it is actually using. So this is for accurate reporting on the memory used. And the options that I used above uh, in the example here is to disable the parallel garbage collection. So instead we will use sequential garbage collection, and also disabling the load balancing again for the garbage collection. So these are the options that we can, we are actually using by default, some ideas that we could use, and the link to all the options that you have at your disposal. Of course, you are free to play around with them, experiment. Uh, I don't know if you will end up figuring out a much more... Uh, uh, optimal resource, uh, uh, optimal set of RTS options. Some of the options are actually pretty much uh, hardware-based. 
So depending on your architecture, on the machine that you are using, on the specs of the machine that you are using, you might need to use some other, uh, or you might benefit from using some additional RTS flags. But that is, uh, unfortunately, for you to figure it out. And, well, this is all about runtime system options. Let me just skip now to the most interesting part, which is actually running our nodes. And for running our nodes, I actually want to first prepare my topology files, right? And we have talked about the topology file a bit. So let me just show you how my topology files look like. One thing that I should mention is that I have actually uh, created another relay so that now I have two relays. I said that I was going to have only one. I have created two. and um, I have already submitted a new registration certificate so that my two relays are now registered on chain and they should be able to be picked up by uh, other uh, relays on chain, in the network. Now, um, mm -mm -mm, this is my local machine and this is my block producing node. So let me first show you the topology file that I will be using on my block producing node. It is fairly simple. As you can imagine, let me just nano uh, configuration topology file. So I'm running 135.5 version of the node on the block producing node. And here you can see that I am uh, using a couple of relays on local routes. Relay 1, Relay 2, the reports. Uh, advertise false. Remember that this is not used at the moment. This is used. Uh, this is there for later when we have peer sharing uh, released. Right now, it is doesn't have any effect. And we have valency too because we want to have hot connections with uh, all our nodes in local routes. So ba basically, remember that valency must be equal to the number of peers in local routes. You can have multiple groups if you want. And uh, well, from here, we don't have public routes, advertise false, of course, and use ledger after a slot minus one to tell the node that we don't want to ever use ledger peers. So we only want to connect to our own relays and that's it. So this is my basic uh, setup for my block producing node. I am leaving you here an example for that. And let me just come back to a relay node so that I can actually show you how my topology file for the relay node looks like. It, they are pretty much the same for both cases, for both relays. And uh, in this case, uh, I am using a um, topology file that is using the old version, just to show you that 1356 can hold still the, the two version of the topology file. This is using the old version. You can, of course, uh, Apart from having your block producing node here, this is my block producing node, you can also perhaps want to include your other relay here as well. So let me just do that. My other relay, my relay one actually, IP address is 194.113. One nine five two zero six one nine four one one three one nine five two zero six, and all my nodes are running on port the south three thousand to avoid confusions, closing. And this time I want to use here valency two, of course, because I want connections to both of them, right? Using this time public routes the IOG relays and use ledger after a slot, just a reasonable slot number. So that's nice, it should work. Let me just now save it and close it. So this is my topology file for both my relay node and my block producing node. Note that I am connecting to my other relay in the case of my relay, just because I want to have some sort of redundancy. It's not mandatory, but I think it is a good idea to have that. Now, 
let me just move on. Another thing that it is very useful, very practical to do is to have a startup script. Let me just show it to you. Nano start no the sage. So this is just a bash script where we are preparing some, uh, de declaring some variables. And these variables are basically for the paths to our configuration files, the path to our database, the path for the socket, the path for the host uh, uh, address, the path for, no, no, the path, sorry, the value, <laughs> and the, the value of port and the path for configuration here. And then just simply the command that we are using to, to run, note that I am not using any additional RTS options right now. I'm sticking with the default. This should give you a very decent performance. So let me just close it and clear this screen. Something very similar is going on here in my block producing node. I also have a similar script over here. The only difference is that this time uh, I can, actually I can use 00 over there. And I have, I am including variables for the paths of the signing keys both the CAS keys and the BRF keys, and of course, to the operational, operational certificate. That because the command that we are using to run Cardano node as a block producer actually requires us to specify the path to the Shelly CAS signing key, to the BRF signing key, and to the operational certificate. Apart from that, the rest of the command is exactly the same as for running a passive node as we have done before. So it, the, what makes it different is these three options that we have here. And with that, we will enable our node as a block producing node. Let me just clear this screen. So as you can imagine, if I run the script, this will, of course, start my node. But this is not ideal. Running, running the node uh, just using the script is not the perfect scenario because what if it crashes? What if something goes wrong? I would need to come back and manually restart it and that would require me to be monitoring my node all day, all night and be ready to act at any time. But, oh, thank God and the great developers that prepared it, we have systemd and uh, we can use systemd to actually uh, handle the automatic restart of our nodes. Just a quick mention before I go to that. Uh, sometimes you may need, uh, when you run your, your block producing node, the, the, the one that is of course running the BRF uh, signing keys, um, you might encounter a problem with the BRFs and that will be immediately detected and the node will not start. And the error that you would get in that scenario is that you have bad permissions, wrong permissions for the BRF signing key. And you will see something like BRF private key file uh, has other file permissions. Please remove all other file permissions. And you can fix that with this, uh, changing the permissions to 0400 or with these other commands, uh, any of those will work and will give you the proper permission for the BRF uh, key. I had that before, so I had already fixed it, but um, just to let you know that this may, may happen. So now we are ready to actually start preparing systemd and uh, for that, the first thing that we want to do, I suggest that you do this, is make sure that you set your time zone to UTC. The node reports times in UTC time. So it is very practical to have your system in UTC, in particular later when you are actually going to be querying your logs with uh, journal CTL. Um, it will be easier to think about it if you use, use uh, UTC time as the node uses. Uh, but of course, this is just a recommendation. You can you can stick to your local time zone and that will still work. But I will tell you why I think it is very useful um, in a minute when I am there. So let me just come back here, do the same for my block producer node. And with that, I have set my time to, oh, no, sorry, uh, time date CTL. 
uh, my time zone now is set to UTC. Okay. Let me just clear my screen. And uh, now we are ready to actually prepare our uh, unit file for system D. And for that, let me just uh, first show you one important and relevant thing. And it is that uh, Cardano Noth is no longer under dot user local bin, but instead I have it under user local bin. Okay, so minor difference, but it is important for uh, the unit uh, uh, Cardano node service to actually uh, work correctly. Now I need to bring I need to create this file. It is Cardano node dot service file. The, the extension here is a required by systemd. And we are going to create it in etc systemd system. Note that because of the location, we need to use sudo. Otherwise you will open the file, you will trigger it, but then you will not have uh, other, uh, the permissions to actually save it. So you need to use sudo here. And this is exactly how it looks like as every uh, unit file has three sections, unit, service, and install. And for the unit part, we basically are just saying that it can only start, Cardano node, after we have networking available and running. And we don't only do that, but also we put it as a dependency. Also for the service, we have very simple setup. Just uh, the user, the type is simple, working directory, the home directory. The start node, the script is the one that we are going to use to actually start the service. Uh, and the kill signal for the times when we have to actually force it to, to restart will be sigint. Anything higher than that will risk to uh, actually cause damage to the database. And that itself will <coughs> actually cause this node to take longer to start. So you don't want to cause damage to the database. So better use sigint. Then, well, limit uh, number of files. Uh, uh, it should be more than enough with this number. Restart always when needed, of course. Restart time, we will wait 10 seconds between restart attempts. In the syslog, it will look like a Cardano node. And finally, we are uh, just setting wanted by multi-user. So very simple systemd file. And after that, we can simply just, actually, we need to run the systemctl daemon reload. And afterwards, we can simply do enable Cardano node service. Next thing that will be very useful to do is the start Cardano node service. And finally, one very useful thing to run is status Cardano node. And it is telling us that it is active eight seconds ago. Memory usage at the moment the command that we use to run it, the process ID, and the final pieces of logs that we see there. We see the started opening ledger DB, which is what we see at the startup of the node. So let me just clear the screen again, because I want to show you a additional number of commands that we can use, but by now, congratulations, we are running our block producing node as a block producer. And we can actually use journal CTL to inspect our node, our logs. We can say journal CTL dash dash unit Cardano node dash dash follow. If we use this follow option, it will, it will be like tail minus F, which it is basically following live the, 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 the node. And um, we can set also, let me just run it this way. So we have our node running and this is inspecting our logs in real time. 
one thing that I wanted to get rid of was this part, because this is just redundant information that we don't really need. So I want to, let me just stop it. I can use dash dash output and I can use cat. This will get rid of that metadata coming from from journal CTL and we are just outputting messages directly from Cardano node. And we don't really need the time from journal CTL because the node itself is reporting the time and date. So we don't really need that. So this, uh, this option of using output um, cat is very practical. Another thing that you may want to use is journal, uh, want to learn, it's a simplified version of that command, journal ctl dash u cardano node dash f dash o cat. This is exactly the same command, but in a short way. It will give you exactly the same result. So let me stop it, clear. So, the node is running in the background, but we don't have to worry about it. We can close this terminal and it will continue to run and we can come back later and nothing will happen. So this is why it is very useful to actually uh, program it as a systemd uh, service. Of course, if anything happens, if the node uh, crashes, it will be restarted. If the node gets stuck, it will be restarted automatically. If uh, for whatever reason, it gets out of memory, runs out of memory, it will be restarted. So we don't have to be babysitting our node all the time when we configure it as a system, the uh, service or unit. So this is why we strongly recommend a stake pool operates to configure it in a similar way, in this way, because, well, it is extremely practical. One additional command that I want to show you is that sometimes you may want to actually clean up your logs. And basically I'm going to vacuum five days of logs here. I don't have five days of logs, but that is what you would do. Of course, you could have something different, like one day, and that will uh, vacuum uh, the, the, uh, <laughs> the corresponding, um, anything older than one day is deleted, is removed. Anything older than five days is removed in this case. So you can have 60 minutes or something like that as well. So you can have different options, but um, this is uh, how you do that with journal CTL. And I have a block producing node running. I have, I hope, uh, this node running uh, status Cardano node dot service. Um, hope I got it right. No. It is running, which is good. And let me just start my final uh, 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 status start because I know this one is not, I know this one is not running. Now it should be, so let me just check the status. There it is, it is running, or I could use our journal CTL dash U Cardano node uh, dash F to follow dash O for output, cat for the type of output that we want. And there it is, our node running in real time. And uh, this is this is it, guys. Uh, this is how we actually prepare our notes with um, the topology file. We prepare a 
a startup script and we use system D to actually handle the restarting of the node. And that is how we are finally going to, in a couple of days, start producing blocks. And why in a couple of days, you may ask? Well, I will explain that to you in the next video. See you there.